Welcome back to another volume of Truly Disturbing Tales from Reddit. Today we're going to be narrating three new and settling stories, taken directly from the platform. I encourage you all to sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy these terrifying personal accounts. Now, without any further delay, let's jump right in. I grew up out in the wooded country in Illinois, on a short dead-end street, about ten miles from the nearest town. There were seven houses in the area, spread out on two and a half acres of wooded lots. There were no large wild animals there, and people didn't meander there or show up lost. Actually, lost folks or large animals wandering around never happened in the twenty years that I lived there, so please keep that in mind for this story. When I was a young girl, in my early teens, I had a good guy friend a few years older than me who lived next door, Terry. Terry was allowed to go out with his friends much later than I was, and he would sometimes tromp over to my yard after getting home late and throw rocks from the gravel area outside my window to chat. My bed was right next to the window. I'd open it, and we'd whisper stories and generally talk for a bit. My second story window faced our backyard, and his house was to the side. I could see his house from my window over the shrub trees and the walking path to his driveway as well. I'd often know if he was out, the light was on over the side door entrance, or if he was already home and the light was off. One time, during the summer, when my window was open I heard a car in his driveway dropping him off. I was probably 14 or 15 at the time, and it was just around midnight. I heard Terry get out of the car and begin to talk to his friends. But soon his friends were pulling away. I softly called out, as loud as I could without waking my parents, asking Terry to stop by and chat. He didn't respond though, as he probably didn't hear me. Then I came up with a not so brilliant idea to sneak outside and try to scare him. I'd spent many years in the woods, learning how to blend in and be silent. As kids, We'd often sneak around and scare each other, so this was nothing new. I silently sneaked down from the second floor and out my back garage door, which led to our backyard below my window, and backed up to Terry's house off to the side, through our gravel area and a well-worn path through the woods that was no more than 25 feet long. My parents had just put in a gravel pit around the back of the house, probably because nothing much grew due to the shade of the oak trees. There were 14-inch oak rounds set out as an uneven stepping path in the gravel, and if you stepped off of the rounds, the crunch of rocks would give you away. I picked my way expertly and silently across the log rounds facing Terry's house. My eyes got accustomed to the dark, but I didn't see him. It was at that time that I heard the door of his house close and the light going off, signaling that he went in likely going to bed. I waited a bit, as I thought I saw something move in the woods between our houses, but not on the path that we'd always use. If you didn't use the path, there were wild rose and raspberry plants that had thorns and were painful to walk through if you weren't careful. So I thought it was odd that he'd be in the woods, but maybe he wanted to scare me, like I was plotting to do to him. I saw something human-sized and dark moving through the woods slow and pausing every once in a while like me. It was coming closer, and I definitely saw it, but it was strange in that it wasn't walking directly to my window to talk. Therefore, I hunched down and waited in silence wondering if I could still startle him. I still thought it was Terry, and maybe he saw me sneak out and was just trying to scare me back. I watched a dark outline of a human figure moving, but then I would lose sight of it in the foliage. It seemed to be stalking slowly and listening or checking every few feet while hiding. So I whispered after losing patience one last time for Terry, to no response. I got bored of hiding and crouching, so I quietly tippy-toed back to my garage door, went back inside silently, locking up as I did. I snuck back upstairs to my room, above the area where I was just standing. My window was open, and I definitely heard someone or something walking around the yard. I whispered again for Terry, 
but got no answer. Then I heard someone fall and grunt pretty loudly in the window well right below my window. It wasn't enough to wake my parents, but definitely loud enough that I didn't mistake it, and it sent a shock of fear through me. If you aren't familiar with a window well, it's a semicircular hole connected to the house, dug out about three or four feet deep, and reinforced with metal. It allows a basement window to be put in below ground level, and the hole lets some natural light in. There's no way Terry would have fallen in our window well. We had played hide and seek for years around the whole entire neighborhood. We knew everyone's window wells and house footprints like the back of our hands. The grunt sounded absolutely humanish and not like an animal. It also pulled itself out quietly without a lot of thrashing. That's when I realized this wasn't a fun game and someone was out there and it surely wasn't Terry. I tried to look out my window as best as I could, but the screen on it kept me from leaning my head out so I couldn't see the wall of our house or anything directly below me. I then heard the crunch of rocks as whoever it was was stepping in the noisy gravel outside. Again, Terry would know where the log rounds were and wouldn't step in the gravel to make noise. He knew my parents were pretty strict and he was as good as being quiet as I was. Whatever it was, whoever it was, stopped, and I held my breath. I pretty much sat there with my face pressed against the screen, two stories up for probably a half an hour. But as time wore on, and I heard nothing further, I grew tired and eventually fell asleep on my bed that was next to the window. There are a few things that I'm certain of. It wasn't Terry out there. I asked him later, and he said that he went to bed that night as soon as he got home. He also would have no reason to lie. I'm pretty sure it wasn't one of our neighbors, and I can't think of any reason a person would be out there. We had very few neighbors, and only two other houses out of the seven had kids. There weren't any big animals in the area as I said earlier. Only on rare occasions we would see some deer, but they were hunted, didn't come close to the houses, and our dogs would scare them away. I'm not sure what would possess a stranger to be out there that night, but I'm very glad that we never came face to face. For a little context, this story happened about 20 years ago, just after Christmas. I had turned six a month prior. My mom went out one day and left my then 16-year-old cousin to look after me and my two older siblings brother was eight, sister was eleven. My cousin decided to take us out to the city, which was ten minutes from where we lived. We took the bus, walked around the city in incredibly unsafe neighborhoods with basically another child responsible for us. After a few hours, we got tired and decided that it was time to go home. The city had a central area for the buses. Not a bus station per se, but like a huge, perfectly square field with some plants and flowers as well as bushes. Lining all four sides along the street were a couple of bus stops and benches, so basically you could catch several different buses from that area, going all over the city and county. Since it was just after Christmas, the bushes alongside the field were still covered in Christmas lights. As we waited for the bus, I began to wander away as I admired the lights, and my cousin was none the wiser. At some point, I heard a man say hi. I looked up from the bush and he was smiling down at me. Thinking back on it once I got older, it was clear that he was homeless and was most likely on drugs. He had longish brown hair that was wet, teeth that were black along the gums, and his clothes were incredibly dirty, torn, and he had several jackets on. None of this really registered in my six-year-old brain so I just smiled back up and said hi. He asked if I liked looking at the lights, and I said yes, they're very pretty. He said, and I'll never forget this exact sentence, if you like Christmas lights, I've got some really cool lights at my house that you'll love. Would you like to come see them? I eagerly said yes, so he reached down his hand to me, and I took it. We started to walk away, and were headed to the corner of the field where a few big buildings were. He said his apartment was just a couple of blocks away, 
so we were headed around the corner of the building when my other arm jerked backwards, and I turned to see my sister pulling me away from this man. He didn't say a single word, just instantly took off running. It took me a few years for me to fully grasp the danger that I was in. My brother and sister talked about what happened a lot, and just how scary it was. When I finally got a little older, I finally appreciated just how terrifying it was, and how close I was to having my life change, or end. If I had rounded that city corner with them, they never would have been able to find me in time, because they wouldn't even know where to start looking before we disappeared around the corner, vanishing into the midst of the city. This is still something that we bring up sometimes to this day, and it's frightening every time it comes up. I almost put myself in tears just recounting this story now. Watch out for your little ones, and be careful when you decide to let children watch other children. There's no telling how sideways it can get, and just how quickly it can get there. The wife and I live in a decent area, nicely cared for homes, trimmed yards, fairly friendly neighbors for the most part. However, we're just a couple of houses off of a main street where there are a number of duplexes. We rent in a converted home from the early 1900s that's a duplex too, so I'm not throwing any shade. But some of these duplexes seem to partake in some odd activities. Strangers parking on our street for five minutes to an hour sometimes leaving someone in the vehicle, sometimes parked for days at a time. Anyway, I know the signs. There's also a fairly large homeless encampment about a half a mile away, so we get the occasional colorful character roaming through, looking for recycling, something not nailed down, an open car door. You get the idea, but I digress. One Friday night, around 10 p.m., there's a knock on our door. No one visits us without a heads up or an invitation, especially that late. But I thought maybe one of our neighbors needed something. Now, I'm a bit paranoid. Mm, security conscious is a better way of saying it. So I never just go open the door. During the day, I would look out a side window before looking through the glass at the top of the door. But due to the hour, it's dark out. So the side window isn't even an option. In addition to the hour, even if it is my neighbor, something about this situation just doesn't seem right. So I grab my handy dandy, I'll let your imagination fill in the blank here, walk over to the door and flip on the porch light. I have to stand on my tiptoes to see out the little block windows at the top of the door. There's a man staring back at me, about my height, six feet tall, scruffy facial hair, shaved head, looking a little agitated, maybe a bit speedy. He says that he's looking for somebody, but I can't hear it through slurred speech. I ask, who? He says, Kevin. I tell him that there's no Kevin here. The man looks back at me and says, he said that he'd be here. I tell him, you got the wrong address, or maybe you got fished. Stranger says, can I come in and use your phone? I quickly say, nope, good luck. And I stared at him until he turned around walked down the steps, and headed back towards the sidewalk. At this point, I turned off the porch light, went over to the blinds, and watched him wander off down the street. Who knows if the guy was legitimately lost or looking for some fool to just open their door. Whatever the case, don't take chances. Even during the day, if I ordered something that I know that I need to sign for, but the courier can't properly identify themselves, you can leave it on the porch and I'll get to it when I get to it, but the door stays closed. On the off chance that they try to kick it in, good luck. The odds just won't be in your favor. <laughs> 